Then I heard the angels chanting, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. I saw on four sides of the Lord of Spirits, four presences different from those that sleep not, and I heard the voice of those four presences as they gave glory before the Lord. The first, Michael, merciful and long-suffering, blesses the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. The second, Raphael, set over the diseases of children of men, blesses the elect one, the Messiah, and the elect ones who cleave to the Lord of Spirits. The third, Gabriel, set over all the powers, intercedes on behalf of the inhabitants of the earth. And the fourth, Uriel, set over repentance and hope of eternal life, prevents the Satans from accusing men. These four stand near the crystal throne of God, which is encircled by flaming fire, seraphim, cherubim, and ophanim. These beings are referred to as those that sleep not, and guard the throne of his glory. But above all these angels is seated the Most High, the Lord of glory, and seated at his right hand, the Elect One. According to ancient texts and rabbinical traditions as handed down by Rabbi Mir of the second century, Enoch is taken up into the heavenly realms by two angels of fiery appearance. He sees the third heaven and the sun and the stars and the former surrounded by phoenixes and other winged creatures and attended by 15,000 angels who take off his crown each evening to bring it to the Lord and set it upon his head again each morning. In the fourth heaven, he sees hosts of angels armed for judgment while serving God with cymbals and singing. In the fifth, he sees the watchers, four orders, in grief over their fallen fellow angels, but still singing. In the sixth heaven, legions of angels more resplendent than the sun, the archangels set over the sun, the stars, the seasons, the rivers, the vegetation, the living things, and the souls of men, with seven phoenixes, seraphim, cherubim, and seven six-winged creatures, in the midst of them, sing with one voice, indescribably beautiful, while rejoicing before the Lord. And finally, in the seventh heaven, I saw a very great light, and all the fiery hosts of great archangels, and incorporeal powers and lordships and principalities and dominions, cherubim and seraphim, thrones and the watchfulness of many eyes, ten troops according to their rank. Day and night, without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. This is the Erebot where I saw the face of the Lord like iron, burnt in the fire emitting sparks, wonderful beyond words, and the great throne of the Lord not made by hands, and hosts of cherubim and seraphim surround him. According to the Talmud, there are seven heavens, one placed above the other, and ruled over by angelic chief princes, Kemuel, Jochiel, Raphael, Ophaniel, Cherubiel, Zedkiel, Gabriel, Sabriel, Zephaniel, Hashmal, Uziel, Hophniel, and Michael. These ten archangels are believed to be the first chief princes that were created, and Metatron is believed to be appointed over them who is also said to be to transform Enoch from flesh and blood into flaming fire. The fall of the angels is known to have been led by Satan. From Babylonian mythology, he is also known as Lucifer, as the main adversary against the holy and righteous God. He is described and attributed to many characteristics and names, like the Prince of Power of the Air, a reference to the dominion he has over the evil spirits who are permitted to go forth throughout the regions of the Earth's atmosphere and space. In time, these angels who were cast out of heaven for their defiance against God turn their eyes on mankind. And I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Some angels came down to teach mankind righteousness, but instead fell from grace as a result of their sinful pleasures of the flesh. 
These fallen angels became the hosts of giant Nephilim, who were of immense stature and terror. The Nephilim would eventually be wiped out by the Flood, and a second time by King David and his mighty men. The giant beings known as the Nephilim became wandering evil spirits and the seducers of mankind. In Hebrew, they are called the Raphaim and are mentioned many times in the Bible. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men of old, men of renown. Genesis 6.4 The earth was filled with great terror and evil, and the blood of man cried out from the graves. The fallen angels would finally come under confinement by the power of heaven. Captured and punished by the archangel Raphael, Azazel was one of the leaders of the population of the Nephilim. He was the chief debaucher of women. His place of punishment was in Jerusalem by the rocks of Beth Hadudah, where scapegoats were also offered for atonement. The second rebel leader alongside Azazel was Samyaza. They assembled on Mount Hermon. They had ten generals under them, with a hundred angels each at their command. These angels made an oath in defiance against the God of heaven, and they took upon themselves the daughters of man. The punishment they received at the hands of Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel did not completely annihilate them. Samyaza and Azazel are believed to still have revealed secrets of heaven to King Solomon, while even more angels would later betray divine secrets heard from behind the curtain of heaven. As a result, fallen angels were expelled from their positions in heaven and bound in the abyss. In modern times, occultists like Aliester Crowley have opened supposed spiritual portals or stargates, releasing certain powers and deceptive spirits. Many believe that these portals have released demonic and evil influences within hell. As such, the being who came forth out of the portal that Aliester Crowley opened called himself Lamb, resembling an extraterrestrial being. Angels throughout the ages have taught mankind truth and righteousness. Prince Michael, the Archangel, instructed Adam and Seth in the ways of agriculture. He also guided Enoch in the mysteries of the unseen world alongside Uriel and Raziel. Raphael revealed the healing power of herbs to Noah, while Suriel, the Angel of the Face, taught Abraham the language of creation and revelation, allowing him to study the writings of the First Fathers. Gabriel taught all of the 70 languages he knew to Joseph, while Moses received divine knowledge from the angel Yephaphia, or the angel of divine beauty. Occasionally, the angelic beings of heaven gather in joyous interest to listen to a sage of great wisdom and knowledge, while at other times they resent man for the revelation of knowledge of heavenly mysteries. Thus, they sought to dissuade the Most High from giving the law to Moses. However, Moses pacified them by his swift, wise arguments, sparking great favor amongst the heavenly host. In a similar position, the angel sought to drive Jacob from paradise, until God interceded, saying, Leave this venerable sage unscathed, for he is worthy to make use of my glory. The angelic host placed over judgment are fierce and powerful. Moses described them as a terrible troop of angels, more powerful than all of the other angels. They are described further from God's vocation, thus affording man the opportunity to repent and turn away from their sin. They are described in the testament of Abraham as slinging the souls of the wicked and are under the leadership of seven chief princes which are under the angel of death. Other angels attributed to destruction are Kushiel, the rigid one of God, Nathaniel, the flaming one, Shoftiel, the judge of God, Makatiel, the plague of God, Hutriel, the rod of God, and Rogziel, the wrath of God.
Writers of the Talmud and the rabbinical teachers of law were inclined to individualize the angels and assign distinctive characteristics, positions, and rankings. This was influenced by the breastplate tabits, which are said to be worn by the angelic hosts, in which their names appear alongside gods. Ancient Hebrews commonly gave a testimony to their children before their death, and this tradition has been captured in ancient oral traditions like the fragments of the Twelve Patriarchs. Other fragments and manuscripts are often pseudographical, being written by a close pupil or family member. While much of oral tradition and extra-biblical texts are not inspired canon like the Bible, they often affirm biblical theology and add additional understanding to the mysteries of heaven and God.